Hey guys, it's Lyric. Welcome back to another video. As you can tell, this is going to be another monthly wrap-up. However, this time we have two months included. In February, I read a total of like four books and I was just like, I don't think anyone wants to watch a four book wrap-up. Even though I ramble so long, I feel like I could have still made a full video about those four books. But I'm going to be including all the books I read in February and March and we're going to talk about them in this video. One little random thing, looking at all of these books, I'm pretty Pretty sure almost all of them are included in reading vlogs on my channel so if you ever want like more in-depth thoughts or reactions or a more hands-on experience with any of these books scroll through my channel because there is a high chance there's probably a reading vlog about one of the books in these wrap-up videos so if there is a reading vlog about it I'll probably mention it because I do that all the time yeah that's really all I have to say let's jump into my February and March wrap-up First book we have is Scarred by Emily McIntyre. This is from the Never After series, which is a whole series she has of about six books, I think now. And it's basically fairy tale villains getting their happily ever after. It's kind of dark romance as well. I definitely wouldn't even fully consider it dark romance, but sometimes a little bit. I guess it kind of toes that line. All of these books, although they are in a series, they're definitely standalone books. Like you do not have to read them in order. You could pick up one of them or whichever one you want. They're all completely separate stories. I have now made reading vlogs of Hooked, which is the first one, and Scarred. So if you want to watch those, feel free to. This one is based off of the fairy tale of the Lion King. And you can really pick it up throughout the book, obviously, because that's the theme of it. But this is about Prince Tristan Fossa, and he's not destined for the throne. He kind of is like, like Scar from The Lion King, obviously. So his father dies and his brother Michael is assumed to take the throne, but of course Tristan is like, no, I want to steal it. I deserve to be king. We know how this is really supposed to go. Michael is betrothed to Lady Sarah Beatro, which causes a little bit of tension because slowly Sarah and Tristan start to have this chemistry and he's like, wait, pause, this is my brother. Not only are Tristan and Sarah kind of getting this, t this vibe going on, Sarah's goal is to eradicate the fossil line. So she wants to marry Michael and she's like, I'm about to end both of y'all. So Sarah's trying to end the line. Tristan is trying to take over the line and Michael is the line, <laughs> I guess you could say. So yeah, that's like the premise of this book, but I personally loved this one so much. I ended up rating it four stars, but in the reading vlog, I just really ate it up because I love characters that are dark and morally gray a little bit, and that's exactly what Tristan Fossa is. I loved his dynamic with Sarah. He has, he's just like very charming, and he had these really good lines, and I was like, why am I blushing right now? Why do I want to be Sarah so bad? But it was very quick paced. I was able to read it quickly. It was just a fun read. I really enjoyed my time reading this one. I'm trying to remember it because I can't like fully remember. I read this almost like a full two months ago, but I can confidently say this was a very enjoyable read. I just really love Emily McIntyre's Never After series and I can't wait to read more of the books in this series. So four stars for Scarred. Next up, I finally started this highly talked about series and I'm so so glad I did and that is the Chestnut Spring series by Elsie Silver. I read Flawless then I read multiple books for other videos and then I read Heartless but we're gonna talk about them at the same time because they're in the same series obviously. If you guys haven't heard of the Chestnut Spring series it is like a basically cowboy romance series except all of the characters and all of the tropes don't all have to do with cowboys specifically. However it's a whole family that lives on a farm so that is very much the vibes. We got, we got that small town romance thing going on you know what I mean and I actually have a reading vlog of both of these books that will be going up after this video so stay tuned for that first off we have flawless and this is about Rhett Eaton and Summer Hamilton Rhett is basically a professional bull rider and we start off the book where he's kind of losing a bunch of sponsors because of his actions he is the youngest Eaton brother and he gives the youngest brother vibes in the best way possible like you know when you think about youngest sibling you get it all. Like, you can completely tell by the way Rhett acts that he's the youngest child. And so his agent, who is helping him with sponsors and stuff, his agent's daughter, Summer, is tasked by her dad to babysit Rhett so that he doesn't, like, lose more sponsors throughout his season and he acts correctly and everything. And Summer's like, bro, I do not want to babysit a bull rider. So she's sent over to the Eaton's ranch. I always forget what it's called. And she's over there helping Rhett stay in line. And the dynamic between 
I just, guys, I can't talk enough about how much I enjoyed my time reading this book. It is an experience. It's not just a book. Like, I love the trope and everything about it. All the side characters, whenever books have good side characters and it's so much more than just the main two romance characters, oh, oh, it is amazing. And that's exactly what this is. We have all the Eaton brothers. We have Jasper and Theo who are basically brothers. They're just super, super close with the family. I love the dad, the ranch, the dynamic. It is so good, guys. I need, I actually need you to read this because I enjoyed my time with this so much. And I love, they always have like, they throw in these text messages between Rhett and Summer or like group chat with the family. One of my favorite parts of this series I think is gonna be the text because they're so funny their humor is great I just I ate this book up I loved I loved the dynamic I loved the town and I love the storyline I looked up fan art of Rhett Eaton and that man is so hot he is so hot with his hair and it's too much it's too much but all that to be said I don't want to go into detail too much about these books because it's much better if you just dive in and enjoy the ride y'all it's so much fun but I love this series and I really really fell in love with Elsie Silver's writing I just really like her writing style but yeah I ended up rating flawless four stars such a fun read and such a great introduction to the Chestnut Springs series the second book in this series heartless is one of those books where I knew going right in into it that this was gonna be right up my alley. I knew I was gonna really, 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 really enjoy this one. So basically our MMC in this book is Cade Eaton. He is the oldest of the Eaton brothers and we do get an introduction to him in Flawless and when we were introduced to him, I was like, his book his book. I need it now. Give it to me. I always relate to books with oldest siblings because I am an eldest sibling and it might not seem like it in my YouTube and stuff, but the way I act around like family members and other people, I give oldest siblings. I'm just very bossy and controlling. It's hard to explain. I'm very much older siblings, so I love reading about them because I always relate. Cade is a single dad and our FMC in this book is Willa Grant, who is Summer from Flawless, Summer's best friend, right? I love the way these books are gonna intertwine. I love that we're gonna meet more girls, are gonna get added to the Eaton family. So excited, like I can't wait to read more of this series. But basically summer's coming up and Cade helps run the ranch. That's his responsibility. And so during summer, it's really hard because his son Luke is at the house. He's not going to school every day. And so Cade needs a babysitter. And Summer was like, my best friend, like she's coming over here and she might want to help you out. So Summer's suggesting that and Cade is just so picky with every babysitter that walks in. He's like, no, 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 you are not watching my son. I don't want you. Literally go, leave, don't come back. Guys, the meet cute between. Kate and Willa so freaking good. Kate is in line and Willa is in front of him. He doesn't know her at all. No, they don't know each other. They haven't met, obviously. Hence the meet cute. And Willa reaches into her purse to get something and she accidentally drops something. Kate reaches down to pick it up and hands it to her and he's like, hmm, that's underwear. Why does this woman have a pair of stray underwear in her purse? And Willa turns around and she's like, oh my god. That is so embarrassing. She's like, you know what? You can keep it. She's very flirty. Her personality is all out there. She is so feisty and I love her so much. She is probably one of my favorite FMCs that I've read about in a long time. I love her personality, but basically her and Kate personality wise are very different. Long story short, Summer ends up introducing the both of them once they're back to the ranch and they're both like, unfortunately we have met. Um, but yeah, all I gotta say is I love this book so much and Luke, Cade's son, is the cutest thing ever. I love the dynamic. I love the story. I really loved, like, the spicy scenes in this were so good. Cade Eaton is just, oh my goodness, he actually makes me unwell in the best way possible. You're gonna get so mad at me. I ended up rating this 4.75 stars. I might end up rating it 5 stars in the future because I genuinely almost every day think back to this book and I read it weeks ago what I would do to be Willa Grant so I could be with Cade Eaton like I genuinely think about it all the time I feel like I'm a part of this family and I just loved this book so 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 much I just cracked my windows a little bit because I'm not turning on my AC and I'm sweating I'm so hot and I sweat a lot when I film talking videos so hopefully 
the sound isn't too bad. But moving on, the next book I've read is A Love Redesigned by Lauren Asher. This was my first book that I've read by her. Haven't read the Dreamland Billionaire series, which I've heard a lot of, but I did end up picking up this one. Also read this in a reading vlog, I believe, if you want to watch that. But this is about Julian and Dahlia, and they are basically like frenemies. It's like a frenemies to lovers trope. Their families have been friends forever, and so Dahlia and Julian grew up together, but they always had this kind of competitive thing going on like, where it's like we're competing it's competitive but like it's all fun and games it's not they're in college together and something ends up happening between the two of them long story short Dahlia ends up being engaged to Julian's old roommate in college this book starts off with Dahlia no longer being engaged both in like the construction renovation business I really can't be clear on what their jobs were but Dahlia returns home Basically, Julian agrees with his mom. His mom is like, come on, Julian, like help her feel better. Help her help her renovate this house, work on this project together. It's gonna be good for both of you. And Julian's like, oh my God, like mom, I do not wanna work with her on this. But he ends up taking on the project. So it's both Julian and Dahlia working together on this project in the old town that they lived in. I can't really remember much specifically about this book. Once again, this is one I read a while ago, but I do know I really, really, really enjoyed it. This is also a longer book. It's close to 500 pages but it didn't feel like that to me I personally really really enjoyed the whole thing I just loved their banter their banter was really really giving it was very enjoyable for me I think I ended up rating it 4.25 stars sorry I can't share more thoughts I thought I would remember a little bit more about this book than I do but I do know I liked it I have heard that some people think it's really boring and that it was a waste of time personally I enjoyed my experience reading this book and I would recommend it. One thing I really did like about this was the balance between characters, the atmosphere in general, the spice, the romance, like there was the perfect amount of spice in this book and I really enjoyed the balance of it all. It was a really well crafted formula for a book I guess you could say but yeah 4.25 stars for love redesigned next up I read bride by Allie Hazelwood which is her newer release or it was her new release when I read this this was a little bit different for Allie because as you know she writes a lot of women in stem romances that's like what she's known for she did come out with a YA book which was check and mate and I absolutely loved that one but this was different because this is a paranormal romance so we were really like okay this this is gonna be interesting I honestly thought it was gonna be a little more like fantasy vibes but it's really not a lot of aspects about it feel very human and don't feel super fantasy at all if that makes sense it's also in the Omegaverse I know nothing about that and I learned a little bit more of that throughout this book but I really was pretty blind going into it this is about misery lark and low Moreland misery is a vampire and low is a wolf and they basically have this arranged marriage that takes place at the beginning of the book it's to like unite or something something they have to do so that there's not a war between the vampires and the werewolves honestly I don't remember much about what went on in the plot of this book but I do know I loved it it had me giggling kicking my feet and acting a fool out in public something about her she always elicits that reaction from me whenever I'm reading her books and this one did the exact same thing the spice scenes y'all um yeah why did I enjoy it should I enjoy it is it okay to have enjoyed it but I just had a fun time reading this book love 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 anything Allie Hazelwood puts out I haven't read a book by her that I didn't enjoy I think in the vlog where I read this book I gave it 4.25 stars but I've lowered it down to four stars not really for any particular reason just because I feel like 4.25 stars I would remember a little bit more about it really really enjoyed this one I'm so excited to talk about these next two as I've mentioned I got sent light lark and nightbane by Alex Astor and I was so excited when I got the email I was like first off how am I worthy of this second off yes please thank you I was not aware that there was like a lot of controversy among these books and the author like I really didn't know what was going on so I went into this without being swayed in any way I didn't have any outwardly opinions it wasn't until I started rating Lightlark on Goodreads I started scrolling through I was like oh 
didn't know that was how everybody felt but all right but the premise of this book in my personal opinion is so neat basically every 100 years the island of light lark reappears it reappears to host a deadly game where rulers of these six realms will basically compete and fight with their powers and everything because their goal is to break the curses every realm has a curse and they have powers and so the point of these games is they want to break the curse how do you break the curse one of the six rulers has to die that is like the premise of the book that's what you go into the book knowing i loved it I absolutely loved it. I would say the first 20%, there is a lot of world building. I guess other people could get bored. I wasn't. It's not crazy hard to understand or anything, but you probably will have a few moments where you're like, bruh, is this even exciting? Yes, because as soon as those games get started, so much happens. Our FMC, her name is Isla. She is a wilding. Wildlings can control like nature and their curse is that they must eat human hearts to survive and kill anyone they fall in love with. That is their curse. We end up getting this kind of like a love triangle, sort of. If you hate love triangle, I don't think that will be as much of a pro I'm, I'm that's what I'm referring to it as but it's not as much of that as you would think the other love interests are Oro and Grimm uh, I just have to say it now Grimm ah! ah take a wild guess what his type of realm is nightshade is that even surprising because I always fall in love with night shadow wielding darkness ruler men no hesitation it happens every single time and i can't stop it i fell in love with grim i love grim the t oh but yeah that's all i'm gonna say about this book but the ending the ending of this book was insane the last chunk of the book it gets so exciting i can say that about light lark and nightshade the endings go crazy like the amount of stuff that's packed into that last bit of the book Oh my goodness, you will be thrilled. It was very fast paced. Oh yeah, by the way, it is young adult fantasy. Just throwing that in there. Yeah, I ended up rating Light Lark 4.25 stars. And the way it ends, you literally want to jump right into Nightbane. I don't know what other people are complaining about. Personally, I ate it up. Moving on to the second book in the series. I don't know if there's going to be another book after this, but I know right now we have Light Lark and Nightbane. I'm not going to talk much about what this book is about because that really spoils a lot of Light Lark. Clark. throughout this book um while I was reading it the first good bit of it it was a little slow and I kind of was like how is this gonna get exciting I can see where we're going see what direction this could take but I don't understand how all of these words I'm reading are gonna be worth the ending I gotta say throughout the whole book I was like this is gonna be like 3.25 stars if they keep up with this 3.25 stars ended up rating it four stars. I'm gonna try to explain this without spoiling anything, but throughout this book, the first part of it is all in current timeline. Then we get this moment where it starts switching between the past and the present, and you're like, I know, Lyric, like I've read books like that before. Yes, but this is different because when we're switching between the past and the present, the information and the stuff that the character is learning from the past directly transfers into how they act in the future this is almost like new information that is being gained from the past and then they directly have to act upon that in the future and that aspect was so good and let me tell you i was living for the past all of the past chapters I was living for. I was reading and vibing with it. I was okay, we started getting those past chapters. I was like, all right, this is more interesting. But when that ending hit, that last 75, 80%, I cried about three times. I was not expecting to cry in this book. The ending, oh. some of the quotes too, I might end up posting those on TikTok or something because they ate and I was like, oh my heart. I would say it was worth it. I could see how people probably complain about this and are like, it's kind of boring. And there definitely were a lot of moments that really dragged on, but the way it ended and all of the cuts to the past, I loved it and I think it was worth it. So yeah, I ended up rating Nightbane four stars overall i guess this is like a four star duology if it ends up being a duology i don't know if it's gonna become more than that i would definitely recommend them i don't know what all the hate is for but 
I liked it. Next up, I read Happy Place by Emily Henry. Don't even come at me and be like, oh, you must not really like her like that if you're just now reading it. Like, why did it take you so long to get to that book? I made a commitment when it first came out because all her other books have been released in paperback. This one was released in hardback and I was like, no, I'm not gonna read it until it comes out in paperback literally almost a year later i saw it in barnes and noble finally it was in paper bag i snatched that up so fast and started reading it don't worry when funny story comes out I'm not making that mistake again i will simply have to buy it in hardback and paper bag i can't even find the words but i'm gonna try this is about win and harriet this group of six friends who have been friends since college is where this started forming and they always met up at i think it's sabrina lake house beach house i get confused about the specifics but they always met up there for like a week every summer to hang out and they made major memories. This is where Wynn and Harriet met. Then later, Wynn and Harriet end up becoming an actual couple and the whole friend group knows about it. And so the way this book starts off, they are all meeting back at the same place. This time Harriet is there and she's like, yeah, Wynn isn't going to be here this time. She has this whole story that she's going to tell her friends about why Wynn isn't here when in real Real life they have broken up and they're no longer together but they weren't ready to tell their friends and family about it so they're gonna act like he was away on work and stuff like that that was the plan however Harriet arrives and her friends surprise her and they go guess what Wynn was able to come Harriet and Wynn talk in private and they're like we're gonna have to pretend we're still together because two of their friends ended up being engaged and they wanted to have a wedding there and wanted to make it a really fun wedding thing not only that but it is also their last week getting to spend time together at this lake house because sabrina's dad was gonna sell it so they have made so many memories so many core memories here this is their last week and Wynn and harriet were like yeah we're not gonna mess this up for everybody we're gonna pretend we're still together <sighs> Oh, and pretend they did. I did a really bad job of like explaining it because I could like keep remembering details as I'm explaining it. I read the prologue. The prologue of this book, literally like three pages, and I started crying because I missed Emily Henry's writing so much you really don't realize how good her writing is until you read a bunch of other books and you come back to hers after a long time. There is truly nothing like it. There is just nothing like her writing. She takes English words and creates the most magnificent art in the most beautiful ways of explaining and talking about emotions and feelings and events and thoughts. The way she portrays things, pure talent. I don't understand how she does it, but it was done so so well in this book and I am a beach read girl. Beach read has been my favorite book of hers. Obviously, it's a 5 star happy place also ended up rating us on five stars absolutely beautiful the quotes guys i literally i have a post on my instagram if you want to go check it out it has some quotes from this book literally so beautiful and that wasn't even like that was probably maybe a third of the quotes that i have pictures of i have so many underlines and notes in this book because it tore me apart and put me together at the exact same time the exact same time this was such a beautiful book such a beautiful story and like i mentioned before with emily henry she always does so much more than just a romance there are so many more emotions and topics and things that are talked about and mentioned in her books that make them so much deeper and that makes you connect emotionally a lot more to the book and the characters and i just loved this so much and Wynn and Harriet they got a special place in my heart easy five stars for me I go speechless anytime I try to talk about that book and I can't wait for Emily Henry's next book ah! it's literally coming out next month no this month by the time this video goes up ah! okay finally we are to my last and final book that I read in March and um trust me when I say I've tried to like think of how I'm gonna explain this to you guys it's not working. I'm just gonna read the back of the book and then we'll dive into my thoughts about it. 17 year old Kiba Meriden has spent the last 10 years fighting for survival in the notorious death prison Zalendov, working as the prison healer. When the rebel queen is captured, Kiba is charged with keeping the terminally ill woman alive long enough for her to undergo the trials by ordeal, a series of elemental challenges against the torments of air, fire, water, and earth assigned to only the most dangerous of criminals. Then a coded message from Kiba's family arrives containing a single order, don't let her die. We are coming. Aware that the trials will kill the sickly queen, Kiba risks her own life and volunteers in her place. If she succeeds, both she and the queen will be granted their freedom, but no one has ever survived. With an incurable 
Will Plague, Sweeping Zalan Dove, A Mysterious New Inmate Fighting for Kiva's Heart, and A Prison Rebellion Brewing, Kiva can escape the terrible feeling that her trials have only just begun. So while I was reading this, the first bit of it, it was a little slow. I was enjoying it. I wasn't wanting to put it down or DNF at all, but I was definitely like... I want more like is there more to it there's a lot of like I guess world building a lot of explaining however I feel like it is kind of important because there are some things dropped in there that really add up to the ending and the ending is where I the ending is where I was like jaw on the freaking floor I was listening to the audiobook driving on the way to the gym when I heard the ending when the ending happened I almost forgot how to drive. I was like, oh, oh, hands on the wheel. Right. I almost pulled over, went on my phone. I was like, I have to replay that because I didn't, there's no way I heard that right. Oh, I heard it right. The way this book ends, I jumped onto Amazon and I ordered the rest of the trilogy right there. And that's actually going to be the first book that I read in April is The Gilded Cage, which is the second book in this trilogy. I literally read a whole book after reading this one. And the whole time I was reading it, I was low key thinking about reading the next book in this series because I can't stop thinking about this ending. And I'm so so excited I feel like the rest of the trilogy has a lot more potential and I would definitely still recommend it because the slower parts of this book the first bit of it that's kind of slow the ending makes it worth it the ending validates the slower beginning of the book if you do end up reading the prison healer and even maybe if the ending isn't that cool to you I personally ate it up I would still recommend maybe keep reading because I've heard people that read this trilogy they're like yeah the first book eh but the other two books is where it's at and I can see how that's gonna happen and I'm so I'm really really excited to keep reading this trilogy but yeah I ended up rating the prison healer 3.75 stars it probably would have been rated like 3.25 if the ending wasn't that good that was the final book that I read in March I also did listen to one audiobook it was called the good part by Sophie Cousins I rated it 3.5 stars I actually still kind of remember part of it this girl wishes to be in the good parts of our life she skips forward to it and she's living that part of her life but she doesn't have any any memories about how she got there so throughout her life she's like living with her living her romance with her family and everything but she's like wishing and regretting that she did that because she doesn't have memories from the past and she's not like fully herself she doesn't get to know the journey she took to got to this point I actually did really enjoy the audiobook version of that so that was the audiobook I read. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Feel free to follow me on my other socials. Everything is linked down below. I post so much book content on there. So if you want more book content from me, go check those out. There are probably reading vlogs for almost every one of those books that I just showed you guys, except for The Prison Healer. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Comment down below any recent reads you've had or any of your thoughts on the books that I read in the past few months. Let's talk about it. I love talking about books with you guys. That's kind of the whole point of this channel. So like I want to actually talk to you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I love y'all so, so much and I will see you in my next one. Bye!